Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be looking at a short chapter, chapter 15, of Peopleware, which is called Let's Talk About Leadership. It starts with a great quote, Leadership on the job is rare, but talk about it is ubiquitous. Talk of management and organizational power, how people are used to get the most value from the team as a whole, and so on. It's a hierarchical order, and the best leadership are that because they are able to utilize their underlings most effectively. This chapter presents two different styles that can be used as a paradigm in which to frame one's management of a team. The first is called leadership as a work extraction method, and the second is called leadership as a service. For the first paradigm, the authors recount an interesting anecdote from Leon Trotsky where he observed in a letter that in the military, the junior officers were unable to lead their troops unless they had a sidearm of some kind. That sidearm is a symbol of power and of force and the ability to inflict damage on anyone who steps out of line, and thus is used to extract the desired behavior from the ranks. In modern times, we thankfully don't have to deal with bosses that carry guns around the office. However, the authors state that this has been replaced with delegated authority and positional power which is used literally or symbolically to extract more work out of team members. For the second paradigm, leadership as a service, the author suggests that this is often done without positional authority, or in other words, that the person isn't officially your VP or your department's chief role officer or your head of whatever or your staff engineer, etc. Oftentimes, the most effective leaders can be such because they aren't hindered by the hierarchy companies create. The authors offer these five qualities to develop in yourself to be an effective servant leader. First, step up to the task, whatever that may be. Second, be evidently fit for the task. Third, prepare for the task by doing the required homework ahead of time. Fourth, maximize value to everyone. And finally, do it all with humor and obvious goodwill. Bonus quality, it helps to do all the aforementioned with charisma. In a buzzword heavy chapter, we have another one to add to the mix, innovation. And the authors, aware that their stacking played out words together, really lean into the mission of this chapter. Innovation is talked about a lot in companies, but rarely appreciated or recognized as a positive force because it requires taking time away from other surely more pressing tasks to experiment with, and it might not even lead to anything, and it looks like an underling is going off the rails to try something unfamiliar. Better get him back on track. To, cru to truly accommodate innovators, an organization has to recognize a couple things. First, the people are indeed individuals who have their own values, priorities, skills, and ideas. And second, that only some experiments will pan out into something positive for the company. The first thing is almost always a non-starter, as we've covered in other chapters. But the second is certainly unacceptable, since what company could possibly tolerate wasted time? Finally, the chapter concludes with a vignette from the end of the play, Death of a Salesman that emphasizes the importance of doing rather than talking and is the main lesson of this chapter. That if you want to innovate or lead, you need to make it happen without expecting fanfare or needing a stamp of approval.